Hey, hey, it's Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Thanks for checking out the video. Visit my site, watchcomplications.com. Subscribe here and ring the bell if you want updates and follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. Now, I know a lot of you are here because of my making custom watches, making custom dials, watch tools, sort of the making and hobbyist modding sort of stuff. And I've had a little bit of a mini series regarding making custom dials where I've been doing a lot of testing with water slide decals. I had a first video that did a little bit of initial testing and just to get the lay of the land. And then I had a video that showed a process that I had sort of fine tuned and figured out what really makes it work. It can be kind of hit or miss if you don't follow a specific process. I'll link all of that information in the video and in the description below that gives sort of all the parts information that I'm using, products, and links to the other videos. So as part of that mini series, here we are at the next thing I wanted to test and that was collar. And this is gonna come partially down to the quality of the printer you have, the size or scale of the dials that you are printing. And in my case today, I'm testing on 28.5 millimeter dials, which is fairly common size, but it's also very small. There are two very specific dials with color that I'm going to test in this video, and I'll give you the whole process, similar to what I've done in the other videos, but if this is the first one you're finding, I'll have the process here and in the description below. First, let me give you a little bit of insight into what's coming up soon in terms of more videos on the channel. One of the questions I get sometimes is, what happens to some other things on a dial when you put them in the oven, besides applying the water slide decal? And that's partly because people want to take dials with existing components, indices, logos, maybe ink, uh, loom, and they want to just put some water slide decal text or logo or something on it. And the question is, well, what happens? So a couple more videos coming related to that. One will be me just testing a variety of dials that have logos with adhesive, applied markers that are, some are soldered, some are an adhesive, some are an epoxy, dials with loom, what happens to water slide decal ink off of a printer, laser printer, after you've already baked it once, what happens if you put it in the oven again. So I've got a variety of dials with that kind of stuff on them, components on them, and what happens if those are put in the oven. I like testing things for myself. It's a scientist in me. So I've done water slide decals. This one's about a color. I'm gonna test what happens to some other things on dials when you put them in the oven for that step in the process. And then that'll all lead me to taking a pre-made dial that maybe has markers, loom, other stuff on it. And if I just wanna add some text or a logo to it, what happens if I apply the decal and put that in the oven? What happens to all of the components together? So more videos coming in this series. I know that's what a lot of you are interested in knowing. So we're gonna do more of it. Also in the near future, I have a review of a low cost dress watch. What I think is probably the best one I've found so far for under 30 bucks. I'm not gonna give you too much of a hint right now, just a peek, but I, I love this watch actually. And that's saying something for a cheap, low cost quartz based watch. I don't like the mesh. I've got some leather straps to put it on. It's really, it's just a good looking basic watch. I'm actually shocked by it still. That's gonna be great fun to do that low cost review. And then I have a couple of watch project videos coming that I'll put up some pictures to kind of illustrate. I have a new movement holder to make for a very specific case and a very specific movement, not necessarily meant to go together. But I wanna show you the process of measuring the components, case and movement, drafting it in AutoCAD, and then going through the 3D printing and testing and all of that. So that'll be interesting. And then I have a Monty Python Ministry of Silly Walks mod. I have bought one of these sort of just for fun, just because sort of, you know, gag gift sort of watches, right? And I'm gonna try to make it legit. And I'm looking forward to showing you the mods I have in mind for this. So this is gonna get some upgrades. I think it's gonna be really fun. Cool, looking forward to showing you that. Sorry, I'm biased, but I really like the variety of the channel and what I'm trying to pump into it. But anyway, let's get to the water slide decals. What happens when you work with color? Let's do it. As we get going, I want to do a quick wrist check since I didn't show it in the intro. This is my Christopher Ward C60 Bronze GMT. This was a limited edition. I now have two bronze watches. <laughs> Both of them are CWs, uh, limited edition models. But you know what? I love this watch. Needed a mechanical GMT, and this is the one I landed on. Glad to have it in the collection. To give a little bit of context, this is the result of 
the last video I did on water slide decals, this was just black printing. You can see there's no model name, which I'm adding to this next version. And it, it worked pretty well. I, I'm going to go through the same process. But that's where I was. Now we want to try collar and see what that can do. Got a couple of blank dials here. This one is just a primer. It's a darker white. It's got sort of a gray tint to it. Really like that color. This is a flat white. So both of these are going to get water slide decals. Another little bit of context is I won't show you all of these, but I went through and printed a ton of test prints, kind of testing all sorts of DPI levels, printing directly from the graphic software, exporting to you know a vector formats and printing, just trying to see what kind of quality I could get as best possible given my printer, which is a laser printer. I'll put the model number down in the video description below, along with links to all the products that I'll mention. It's always important to do a lot of print testing on regular paper. It'll, even though it'll look a little bit different on the water slide decal paper, get everything squared away as possible because the decal paper's a little bit more expensive. You only have so many sheets when you get it with a packet, usually 10 or 100 sheets, that kind of thing. I am using Sunny Scopa Type B, which it was worked best for me so far on these dials. You can link in the description below for that. I would also say when printing on water slide decal, if you're doing something like dials, no need to waste the real estate. Just duplicate the image however many times, you know, to fill up the piece of paper so that you, you know, have them. There, there's some of them might have some glitches, some, you know, little errors in them or, you know, little ink missing or there's a smudge or there's a defect at that location and the paper it may not look good. Uh, ink can get splattered a little bit in places. So having duplicates of everything is really good. So you can try to pick what looks like maybe one of the better ones. And what I did was I duplicated a variety of them so I can test different things. Here's the ones that I did in the previous test. It's just black, no model name, um, and I had them numbered and I used different numbers. Like I'll do one, duplicate each of these. So there's two of these plain number ones. There's number twos, threes, fours, and I have one with the model name. I'm calling this Viking. This was something that came up in a conversation on one of the videos or threads and I thought that was a pretty a uh, clever name. I think one of my subscribers uh, mentioned something like that to look like a Viking ship. Oh, mentioned that my logo, my hat logo kind of looked like a Viking ship. And so I decided to name the series Viking, uh, even though it's a top hat. For those who have looked at my logo in other places, it's, usually there's a 10 six under it. What I've done on this design is I've underlined the 10 and the six to sort of give that feel of the brand. But I put the model name Viking in black text and then I made a version that has the model number in red and that's one of the dials I'm going to test today and then I have what I've numbered infinity and it's a sort of a progressive color wheel. I'll show these up close in a second. I'm going to cut out one of these that looks good and one of these that looks good. All right, so I'm doing two color dials. The first one and this was my first idea was to make sort of a color wheel progression. I'm calling this infinity. I didn't put the model name Viking on this. I thought this would be a little bit more clean and I had done this design prior to putting the model name on the other one so I was like well kind of like how this looks pretty simple what I've done because I wanted to test a variety of colors so I said well why not a color wheel and keep in mind the scale of this this is going on a 28.5 millimeter dial this is tiny if you print this graphic in a, sort of a little bit of a larger size even just double this size those colors are going to look flawless, spotless. But when you get down to this scale, you're going to start seeing the dots and not quite so smooth surfaces uh, whenever you have like things like logo or writing. So there's going to be some imperfection in it, you know, at the macro scale. And that's okay. I, I tried to use uh, colors that actually looked okay in terms of the printing. I tried lots of different shades and these looked okay, but you can kind of see the lines and the dots and stuff. And I have a pretty co good quality laser printer, but some of the colors look a little bit better than others. But this still looks okay overall, particularly to the naked eye. I'd say the hardest shade to deal with was the yellow. And yellow is not a color you see that often, unless it's a really bright yellow, like on a black dial. And so, you know, I'm not that worried about that. Just a regular yellow yellow would almost be invisible against the white. So this one has a hint of orange to it. So that shading is a little bit more noticeable in terms of the actual line. I'm also testing a couple line thicknesses 
I had originally had these much smaller, so the version uh, that's all black, this one, those markers, those lines, look how thin they are. Those are 0.15, the minute markers are 0.15, and the hour markers are either 0.25 or 0.5, but these are much smaller, and it worked okay. What I've done with this one so that the collar stands out a little bit more, and I also did it on the, the new black version as opposed to the collar version, is I've upped the line thickness. Next to the outer circle at the base, the hour marker, so like this teal one right next to the seven, that's one point line thickness, and then the line that extends away from the circle and the minute markers are 0.5 thickness. So I've upped the thickness of the lines, particularly just so it's a little bit more bold, stands out a little bit more. I have upped the size of the hat just a tad. And so those are some of the subtle changes I've made to these. So I'm going to test this color, see how all of these transfer. That's the main point. And then I'm also going to test how this red text comes out and transfers. So I've upped the thickness on these lines as well and added the red text. So let's see how this collar does with the process I've done in transferring just the next step in learning more what works and what doesn't work with these water slide decals. Whenever you cut the decals out, make sure you leave yourself a little bit of edge so you can use your fingers to manipulate the, the dial. Also, just be careful how you set the dial down on what surface because this plastic on the water slide decal will adhere and you don't want it to be moving around a lot after it's set in place it will mess it up. So just be very cautious about where you're setting the dial, how it's drying, that sort of thing. We have our micro set and micro sole. Again, links to those are in the description below. So let's go through the process. All right, so I have my dial set on my dial holder. I've got it set in a way that there's a little bit of an edge underneath so that I can lift it up easily once I have the decal on it and it's dried. Then I have noted where the three o'clock position is. There's a notch in most dial blanks to indicate three. Remember that's tied to where the dial feet are on the back of the dial. So when this is sitting on a movement, it's the right location. So you need to know where three o'clock is uh, in relation to your dial feet. Keep that in mind. Now my process, there might be things about it that are maybe unnecessary. I've tested things lots of different ways. This is what's working for me. And so I'm going to keep doing it the way I'm doing it. And what we're going to start with is micro set. And so I've got a little artistic paintbrush here. I've dipped it in the micro set and I'm going to just brush over the surface of the dial. It's kind of a way of just, I guess, preparing the surface for getting the decal applied. You don't need a ton of this stuff. And so I have a little cup of water here. I'm going to take the decal and set it in the water. That won't take very long, about 30 seconds just needs a little bit of water that way you can peel the paper backing off of the decal get a pair of tweezers you can use your fingers to pull it off a little bit just keep in mind that as you start to peel this away it will might want to curl a little bit you just want to be careful not to wrap it around itself and at some point I typically like using my fingers a little bit too to hold these it's okay just the edge all right so we know where three o'clock is and if the decal starts to get a little bit dry, it'll start to curl up. Just put some water on it. Now I'm gonna move this around, kind of get it in location where I want it. You can see how the decal is gonna kind of want to stick to the surface. So you wanna have it in place before it really starts to dry. That looks pretty good. One of the helpful thing with this design is it has the markers all the way to the edge so I can see that it's nice and even. Now what you'll wanna do is take a Q-tip and start at center and kind of roll your way and slowly work your way the whole way around the dial. You want that ink right next against the surface. So use a Q-tip and start center and roll and slowly work your whole way around. Take your time. Now I'm going to apply more micro set on top. Again, this is just the process that's been working for me. And you might be thinking, now I explained it in my last video, but the micro set softens the decals and improves adhesion. Can also use it as a decal remover. I've found that it really does help adhere to these dial blanks if you use a little bit on the dial initially and then also put a little bit on the surface after you've got it in place. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to let this dry. One thing you'll also notice once you apply the micro set 
is the color starts to look really vibrant or even just the text the start the text just starts to feel, look like it's jumping out at you you can tell that it's really helping work on that adhesion it's kind of really cool to watch okay so we're done with the micro set we're gonna let this dry for 10 to 15 minutes all right so the decal is mostly dried and you can see a little bit of the, the bubbling perhaps on that surface Again, it's not necessarily there's a good look at it you can kind of see what that looks like again don't worry about that that's what it's going to look like after that micro set dries and we're, it's going to get wet again we're going to put some micro sole on it now this is for again it's going to soften the decal it's going to help it conform to irregular surfaces now i wouldn't call this dial an irregular surface per se but it is painted and in my experience it it helps something about it helps adhere and it gives what they call a painted on look and that's certainly what we are going for. Lightly brush this over the surface of the decal. Again, no need to overdo it. Slightly drag it across the surface. You'll see that decal sort of become vibrant again. The color will start to pop out, the, even the black. It's gonna look sharp almost instantly when you apply it. Now this is the first color one I've done. And even if I was doing just a regular, let's say just black text, black design decal like I've done before, no guarantee that this one will come off the surface perfectly. And so you're hoping that it transfers good, but if it doesn't, well, then you gotta start back at square one with a blank painted dial. And so when you're working on custom dials, always good to have several going at the same time so that you can at least end up with a good product when you're done. So always work in multiples if you're doing this. And then we'll let this dry for another 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll go to the next step. I will put a numbered list of the steps in the description below. So take a look at that if you want the text version. Something about painting this clear liquid on feels really good mentally. Let's let that dry. 10, 15 minutes, we'll be back. Okay, so while that was drying, I went and turned the oven on to 225 Fahrenheit, uh, anywhere from 200 to 225 seems to work okay, at least in my experience. Now I'm going to take the dial off of the dial holder. So I'm going to carefully release it from where it might be adhered. If you pulled on the decal really hard, it would move still. So just be cautious. Take your time. No need to rush, right? Okay, so I've got that released all the way around. Now, I can slide my tweezers under here and release it from the back and set it down. Now, I'm gonna go pop that in the oven for 20 minutes. It's always a little bit funny when making watch dials in the oven and someone asks why you got the oven on. They ask if you're baking something tasty. It's like, no, baking watch dials. Okay, so while the Infinity Color Wheel design is cooking, I am going to work on the second one. So again, micro set on the surface, brush around, just a little dial prep, take our decal. The color on this one is just the model, Viking. Throw that in some water. Color on this one, I also made the line sticker. Now this is gonna move pretty easily. Slide off the edge with your fingers. And again, if I can get away without using tweezers, I try. Okay, so make note again where three o'clock is. Okay, and then I'm gonna start sort of rolling it out, get water and air bubbles out from underneath. Now I'm gonna put more micro set on this one. Looks like on this one, very faint, but the uh, end didn't print quite as cleanly as I might have liked, but Micro set and micro saw have very different smells. Just saying. All right, so let that dry for 10, 15 minutes, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, next step, micro sole. Lightly brush this on. It's just a crazy difference. How vibrant that gets. Once you apply this stuff, it almost goes from like almost a gray color to black. So much more bold. It's really cool. It's like, oh, that does look like it's painted on now. Whereas before it looked like a decal. You know, the Sunny Scopa paper comes with their own forms of adhesive slash glue, but I haven't tested it much or played with it much. I did once and it didn't, um, 
I can't remember something I didn't like about it and did some digging, read about these products and said, yep, that's what I'm going to do. That's going to dry and our infinity dial should be done. Okay. So a moment of truth for our color wheel. And I just want to show you, look at the visual difference between these two. So this has had the micro set and the micro sole applied and it's drying. This just got out of the oven. Notice the discoloration on the one that just got out of the oven. That's just the decal paper taking on sort of a brownish tint. This looks like a cream color. Now it doesn't maybe quite look that way on the video, but in person, this looks like very distinct cream color. A lot different than the sort of the, the white of the one that isn't baked yet. That's just the decal paper though. That's not the actual dial. Don't worry about that discoloration when it first comes out of the oven. It can be a little bit shocking. It's like, my dial's not white anymore. No, well, it is. Uh, once we remove the paper, you'll see that. You'll also notice sometimes that the, the decal paper will curl up enough and kind of fold over itself. So again, this isn't necessarily an issue. It just looks kind of odd. Before I peel the paper off of that, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one in the oven. Okay, so we got that off there. Let's go put that in the oven and then we'll take the paper off of this one. All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna just set this on something so I have a little bit of stability. I'm gonna put some pressure on this side and just sort of slowly pull back. Again, this is one of those things where there is zero reason to rush. It's almost like you wanna rip it off like a Band-Aid, but don't do that. Maybe you can see. The, uh, the color contrast there, the white versus the cream. See the sort of brown tint. Looks vintage. Breathe, man, breathe. It's okay. It's just a test. Great audiobook would be Watchmaker Dialogue. Watchmaker Diaries. Something like that, right? I could probably go faster, but no, I'm not going to. Because I might want to use this one. It's turning out that well. It's, we just got to get um, the logo here. And we'll take an up close look at it. Oh, that worked really well. I tell you, it comes down to the process. I, I did so much testing on it. People, my subscribers, if you're not subscribing, you're just watching. If you haven't subscribed, then do it. I can't tell you how much testing I have done in this 10 step process. And I don't know if I could take one thing. Like, do I need to put micro set on the dial surface before I put the decal on? I mean, I've tested some of that stuff. I just feel like the process that I'm doing and that I've written down for you is one that's almost, you know, it's just the most likely to work. It's just, you don't have to struggle with the adhesion by using the micro set uh, on the surface, then micro set on top, let that dry, put the micro sole on it, bake it at that temperature for that length. It's just, it's several in a row that have just come off flawless. I mean, if you see some weirdness in the actual print, that's because that's what the printer printed, right? So that one looks a little bit like a Twizzler. Uh, that's that pink fuchsia color, but every bit of ink that was on that decal is on this dial. And any of these like little minor things, particularly with color, once I put a matte clear coat over this, it's gonna look spectacular. Now, if you're gonna look at this in a macro lens, then you're gonna see some slight imperfections and you're going to see some aliasing for example in the in like the logo it's just at a larger scale everything would look perfectly smooth but this miniature scale hmm. or maybe some imperfections in the actual dial paint you know what this is a one-off handmade we'll call it custom dial it's not meant to look like mass-produced stuff it's not meant to be you know a flawless there's going to be things that are just there because it is hand painted handmade the colors came off pretty well this doesn't look bad does anybody want a 10-6 viking infinity i've got one and i can make a ton more is it as perfect as pad printing no way but to the naked eye once that's matte clear coated underneath a crystal unless you're putting you know macro lens taking macro shots of it it's going to look just fine there's one little piece of something there got my radico pulled that off you can kind of see the way the printer works with the colors. So yeah, it's gonna have that. Well, this came off a laser jet printer, or if you did it with inkjet, by the way, there's specific film-free paper for inkjet 
So make sure you get the one for your printer, whether it's laser or inkjet. But I can't stress this enough. When you look at it just with the naked eye, even up close, you really don't see too much imperfection. And at a distance on your arm, just a few inches away from your face, like six inches away from your face, it looks near spotless to the naked eye. It's obvious to me that certain colors are going to print better. You know, the less odd the colors are from sort of your standard shades, it's going to look better. So red, for example, I initially had a red that was not red only. So think of red, green, blue in terms of putting those colors in any of these graphics programs or anything. So setting the values at 255 or FF and hex and then zero for green and blue is going to give you a much better look. So for example, that red is nice and solid. It's got no variation in it. Whereas with this pink color, which has a little bit of red, green, and blue, it's not quite as crisp or clean. This blue, nice and solid. Whereas the four and the seven, as it moves away from sort of that standard color, the printing's not quite as good. That's just printers, that's just computing. So keep that in mind when you're working with colors. You wanna go as standard as possible. If you add variation off of a printer, it's not gonna be as good. And this is where pad printing really stands out because you can mix any color of ink. Printed on a printer versus pad printing, no contest, but this is a much, much lower cost, quicker, efficient way that's more accessible to more people to do custom dial making. Of course, this is to show that it works with a variety of colors and the process that I have works well with, with all of them. Got one more dial with the model name, get out of the oven and then we'll be done. So all I have to do with this is give it a clear coat. I'm gonna pack it away for now. Let's look at Viking number one. That text came out pretty good. I think making the lines a little thicker is also very helpful. Text is very clear. I've tried different things in terms of anti-aliasing. I mean, this is a vector image printing from a vector app to a laser printer. And again, this comes down to scale. If the scale was bigger, it, it, the, things like the logo or really small lines, curves, print you know, flawlessly. There's no digitization, you might say. Uh, in regard to the design, but is what it is when you're printing at this scale. So the higher quality printer you get, you know, the better you can do, but you know, there's only so much you can do. If this works in terms of a flawless transfer again, I'm just gonna patent and sell this process. I won't put it in the description below. You can email me and ask and PayPal me money and then I'll give it to you. <laughs> Sure enough, flawless transfer. I am thrilled, 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 thrilled to have this process done. If I was gonna like sell this, make it for someone, I would redo this one just because I'd want a, a cleaner painted dial, but also just choosing a little bit of a better decal printout doesn't have the, like that little fading there on the end. So just wanted to get a test, see how this color comes out. Going through the process with color, and boom, works fine. Hope this helps, let's check out. All right, so given the process that I've sort of tested and tried a lot, put together trial and error, we've done some color testing and it really comes down to the quality of the printer, of course the inks, are you doing inkjet, are you doing laser, what you're using to draft the vector images and the overall design, the size of the dial, a lot goes into it. So you can do all that kind of testing on your own. Hopefully you find at least the process and information that I'm handing out fairly helpful. Of course, more videos coming up. We're gonna test what happens to dials when you're baking them, the other stuff and components on dials. And then we're going to do some testing on some pre-made dials, see what happens. So lots to watch for on Watch Complication. Subscribe, ring the bell if you want updates. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications and watch for updates, news, and all kinds of other fun stuff on my site, watchcomplications.com. I'm Brian, I am out.